Hello and welcome. You are now looking at Thrivecart.com and Thrivecart is a self-hosted shopping cart system for entrepreneurs and digital marketers. It has a number of features that are unavailable in affiliate platform shopping cart systems, such as one-click upsells, a private affiliate center, and two-step cart system, as well as features that you'll find on affiliate platforms, such as embeddable carts, funnel builders, A-B testing, coupons, and detailed statistics. The system integrates with membership platforms, provides subscription management, digital sales taxes, and video shopping carts. Currently, if you go to the website, you'll notice that you'll need to go to the notifications section in order to get access to purchase the cart. However, in this course, we will cover how you can purchase a cart as of the recording of this video. And we'll also cover the basic setup of creating a product and then allowing affiliates to promote that product for you. Now, as of the recording of this video, if you go to Thrivecart, in order to purchase, what you have to do is you have to go and put your email here in order to be notified when the cart goes live. And so if you click this link, that will take you to a sales page. And you can watch the sales video here, or you can just go to this link for the lifetime license. That will take you to the shopping cart for the offer. So what you'll see here is that the lifetime license is considered to be $2,000 with a discount of $1,400, bringing the total to $595 or $600. If you're going to set up ThriveCard for client use, you can click this box. That's going to raise the price by $95 to $690. So that is going to be the standard price again right now as of the recording of this video. And so you can pay one time to get the cart. Welcome back. Now once you've made your purchase, you'll come back to thrivecart.com and you can go to this sign in link. And then you can put in your Thrivecart email address as well as your password. Now once you do that, it's possible that you're going to see two accounts. You're going to see one account that's going to be associated with your vendor account as well as an affiliate account if you've already set one up. Now these are two separate accounts with two different areas and in fact two different logins. So what you're going to do is you're going to now go to your vendor account. When you go to that vendor account you're then going to be able to go to your profile and you can find your profile by going to this right side drop down menu and then you'll see that there's a link there that says my profile. The one thing that you'll want to note is that if you're going to be collecting sales tax, you'll want to make sure that you put in your sales tax ID here in this area. If you're not collecting sales tax, you can leave this blank. What you can also do is you can upload your company logo here in this area. Now in the next space down, you'll see your affiliate ID and it will say that this cannot be changed and again that's going to be associated with any products that you are promoting however it is going to be listed here and if you are using the same email address for your affiliate account as you are with your vendor account then that affiliate ID will show up here now another thing that you'll want to note is that if you want to include your business information and your address in the receipts that people are going to receive you can tick this box but it's not ticked by default what you can also do is set up two-factor authentication so that it'll be more difficult for someone to get into your account or to be able to guess your login and password. You can leave this blank or you can set it up. And once you've made all the changes you want to make, you can then click Save My Profile. And Once you've done that, your profile will then be updated and you'll be ready to move on to the next step. Welcome back. Now when you log into the affiliate portal, what you'll see is an overview of all of your activity based on the date that you select. So for example, if you go back in time to all time, you can see all of your affiliate commissions or either week to date, month to date, or however you like to look at it. By going to the products area, what you'll see is you'll see an area 
where you will have all of the products that you have applied for in order to promote. And so if you want to see those products individually, all you'll need to do is to go inside of the view products area inside of any one of the individual areas. You'll see then if you have been approved for any particular product, you can then view the inside and then you'll have access to the link. Now in order to get access to the link, you'll need to set up your affiliate link according to the method set by the vendor. So if the vendor is setting up by PayPal, you'll need to set up your PayPal in order to promote the product. If they're using another method, you'll need to set up by that method for that individual product. Once you've set up, all you need to do is to come to this copy area. You'll copy your link and then you'll then start promoting that link to your subscribers or to your web visitors. You can then track your entire commission history for all the products that you have promoted inside of Thrivecard by clicking this link. You'll then see all of the commissions that you've earned, but you can sort by individual products that you are promoting. And what you'll see here in the bottom is you'll see that there is a recommended product from Thrivecart and that has become part of their affiliate program. And we will look at that program in the next video. Welcome back. Now, whether you are in your vendor area or you are in your affiliate area, you're going to see that there's going to be a button here that says promote Thrivecart now. You can click that link that says become an affiliate. Now the Thrivecart affiliate program pays by PayPal, so you will need to have your PayPal account set up with Thrivecart. And there are no specific Thrivecart promo materials. However, if you like to know how others are promoting Thrivecart, once you look past the paid advertisement as well as the site itself, you'll see others that are promoting this product. You'll also see others either reviewing or promoting Thrivecart in their videos in the video section of the Google search. And you can see others promoting specifically on YouTube. Now a simple search does not yield the link for the Thrivecart affiliate program. You will need to have access to Thrivecart and the affiliate portal or the vendor portal in order to apply for the program. Welcome back. Now if you currently don't have access to the affiliate portal, what you'll need to do is you'll need to find a product that is being listed on Thrivecart. And you can see one here and you'll notice that you have the icon for Thrivecart. What we're going to do is click inside of this link. We're then going to go to the JV page. We're then going to click this link that says get your affiliate link. Now, if you currently do not have a Thrivecart affiliate account, you'll need to sign up and register with Thrivecart. If you already have an account, you'll need to log in and register in order to become an affiliate. You'll need to put in an address and identifying information. You'll then need to certify your information and confirm your registration. What you'll notice then is that you do have access now to the affiliate dashboard. You also have access to the Thrivecart affiliate program where you can click this button that will allow you to apply to promote Thrivecart. Welcome back. Now we can also set up a customer hub for our customers to be able to do research on their invoices and their purchases. And we can do that by going to this drop down menu. We can then go to the settings. Once we do that, we can then go to our account wide settings. And then we're going to go to this link that says customer hub. Now what this customer hub URL does is it allows customers to update any of their billing information or manage their subscriptions or view all of their purchases. What Thrivecart will do is it will take your business or login name that you gave them when you signed up for your vendor account and they will use it as part of the Thrivecart URL along with update info forward slash. What you can also do is you can update with a contact email and URL. 
and you can add that URL in here. What you can also do is upload a logo to your customer hub. And you can add a message to your customer hub. Now, if you want to customize the email, you can use the placeholders and use the code that Thrivecart gives you. Once you have the hub looking the way you want, you can then click Save. But first, you can preview your customer hub, and we can see it here as to how it will look to our customer when they come to the URL that we give them. Welcome back. Now coming back inside of the vendor portal, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this drop down menu and then we're going to go to our settings. We're then going to go inside of the account wide settings. We're then going to click on our invoice options. And basically what you're doing here is you're determining the number where your invoices will start. So for example, what we're going to do is we're going to write in here that we want our invoice ID to be 1001. And so that means then that the next invoice, when we make a sale, will be 1002 and will count upward from that point. Once we do that, we'll then click Save Settings. We can then go back to this point. What we can also do for our invoices is we can set a language profile. So for example, what we can do is we can click this button and then what we're going to do is click add a language profile. And basically what we're able to do here is we're able to create a language profile according to the languages in an existing translation. We can then choose the language that Rivecart has available for it. And for example, we can use this one. We can call this our Spanish profile. What we're then going to do is click Save and Exit. And we then have a language profile for Spanish. And basically, we have the beginning of a language profile for Spanish. And basically, what we're doing, if we have an audience that will be reading primarily in a specific language, we can translate all of the information inside of our cart and on our invoices for that particular language. If we don't want to use a language profile, all we'll need to do is click this delete button. And then we'll delete the language profile. But this is a way that you can customize your invoices and your cart language for your customers. Welcome back. Now you may find that there is someone that you prefer not to do business with. And what you don't want them to do is to come into your cart and to have access to purchase your products. And so Thrivecart gives you the ability to add these individuals to a blacklist. And so what you would do is to go to your settings area. And what you'll see right here in the middle is your customer blacklist. Then what you'll be able to do is you'll either be able to add the IP address or the email or both for the individual that you don't want to have access to your products. And so what you'll be able to do is to click this button that says add to blacklist. You'll then write in the email or the IP address here. And then you'll click blacklist this customer. And it's possible then you could discover that you made a mistake that adding this individual to your blacklist is not what you wanted to do. Then all you'll need to do is to come back to your blacklist. You'll then need to just delete this individual and then they'll be no longer part of your blacklist and they'll be able to attempt any sign up as well as purchase your products. Welcome back. In this video we're going to be discussing the compliance settings and what you're going to do is come into your settings area and then you're going to see this panel legal and compliance. You're going to click that button. Now in this first panel, what you're looking at are Thrivecard's terms and conditions, their privacy policies, and their other documents. You're not changing anything by looking at this link. And these are things that you are going to want to be aware of as you are going to have your customers placing their financial information with Thrivecard. 
What you can also do to give your customers additional security is to make sure that any query string data does not have any personally identifiable information. You can click this setup button. You're then going to just click this link and then you're going to apply this to all of your products. You can then click save settings. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to prevent any third party tracking tools from getting information that they should not get. In the next panel, you can set up cookie warnings so that your customers know that they will have cookies on their PC as a result of coming to your page. And all you're going to do here is you're going to click this button. And then there's default text available to you. If you want to add anything, you can write it in here, but you can just save settings and you will have your cookie bar there. And that will help you with, although it will not fully make you compliant with GDPR. You can also set up a system so that card abandonment will not pick up names and email addresses. All you're going to do here is you're going to click this button. This is going to make it so that you're disabling the feature that allows you to collect names and email addresses from individuals that abandon the cart. Now again, you don't have to enable this, but you can enable it. And all it does is give you an added measure of conservative position when it comes to data collection. If you want to enable this, you can then click Save Settings. Welcome back. Now, whether you intend to use PayPal or Stripe or Authorize.net, you need to set up your payment gateway to work with Thrivecart. And to do that, you're going to come inside of your settings. And then you're going to look at View Integrations. What you're then going to look at are your payment gateways. And basically, you're going to choose the one that you're going to be working with with Thrivecart. For example, if you decide that you want to work with Stripe, you're going to click this button that says Integrate Now. You'll then come to a page where you can integrate. What you'll need to do is you'll need to click this button. In this case, we're integrating Stripe, so we're going to click Connect Your Stripe Account. And typically, it's a one-step process, and all you'll need to do is to make sure you're connected. If you want to connect with another Stripe account, you can do that, and you can do that by clicking this button. You'll then go through the same steps with PayPal, and or Authorize.net. Now the Authorize.net procedure is a little different. You'll need some different information. You'll need a public client key as well as a signature key as well as your Authorize.net login ID and transaction key all of which you'll need to go inside of Authorize.net to get. Now you'll need to come to your API credentials and keys inside of Authorize.net you'll need to click this button that says new transaction key. You'll then click submit. Once you do that, you'll get credentials from authorize.net and you'll notice that this content is grayed out and you should not show this content to anyone. You'll probably want to make sure that it is someplace safe in one of your password managers. Once you've successfully archived this information, you can then click continue. Once you've done that, you'll still need your public client key and your signature key. You'll then come back to your API keys. You'll then click on this button and then you'll get a new signature key. Now this is going to be a very long key. You're going to copy it to your clipboard and then you're going to head back to your Thrivecart account. Now there's one final key that you'll need to get then and that'll be your public client key. And you'll see that here in this link. And what you'll need to do is to create a new public client key. Now obviously this is grayed out but you do have a public client key. You'll want to copy that key and then head back to your Thrivecart account. You should then have all of your information. You'll then click save this authorized.net account. Once you've done that your authorized.net account should be active. Welcome back. Now Thrivecard does integrate with a number of autoresponders so that when you make a sale, you can have an individual automatically added to your email marketing list. And to do that, you're going to go to your settings. Once you get there, you're going to click view integrations. You're then going to see view autoresponders. And you're going to see a number of autoresponders available to connect with your Thrivecart account. We're going to choose the get response 
integration to walk through as an example. Now for the get response integration, what you'll need to do is to go inside of your get response account and get the API key from within it, place it in this dialog box, and then click authorize with get response. Now within get response, if you go to the menus area, you're going to see a link here for integrations. And then you're going to see this link for API. You're going to click that link and you're going to see your API key. Now you have a default API key or you can generate one. Now, obviously this is grayed out. So we're just going to copy this key at the copy link. And then we're going to head back to our Thrivecart account. Once we place that key in the dialog box, we'll then click authorize with get response. Get response will then be connected to your Thrivecart account in order to use with your individual products. Now your Aweber account works differently. You're going to click this button and then you're going to need to log into your Aweber account. Once you do that, then the integration will happen automatically. Your Aweber account will then be authorized. And the process is similar for MailChimp. You're going to click this button. You're going to then enter your username and password for your MailChimp account. And once you do that, then your account will be authorized with Thrivecart. Welcome back. Now Thrivecart also integrates with membership software. And to find those integrations, you're going to go to your settings area you're then going to go view integrations. You're then going to click on view membership platforms. And you're going to notice several platforms that you can integrate with. Teachable, which is a cloud-based service, and the rest, which are WordPress-based services. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use as an example, wishlist member. So we're going to click integrate now with wishlist member. Now what you'll need from your wishlist member site is you'll need your wishlist member URL. You'll also need the wishlist member API key from the site where you have it installed. Now once you're inside of your wishlist member, inside of your WordPress installation, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the settings tab and then you're going to go to miscellaneous. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to see your API key. Once you have that information entered, you're then going to click this button that says save this wishlist site. Then your wishlist member will be activated. Now each process is going to be slightly different. You need to go through these settings as they are in order to integrate them. Welcome back. Now Thrivecart integrates with ways for you to fulfill your purchases of your customers. And so to do that, we're going to go to your settings area. We're then going to go to view integrations. We're then going to look at fulfillment services. And what you're going to notice is you're going to notice a range of ways for you to fulfill services for your customers. For example, if you sell physical CDs, you can use disc.com. If you are a self-published author, you can use Lulu. You can do the same thing with Vervanti and ShipStation. If you are a Shopify customer, and you sell e-commerce related items, you can integrate with your Shopify account. If you use Google Sheets for tracking and other purposes, you can integrate directly with your Google Sheets account. And as an example of this integration, what we're going to do is we're just going to integrate with our Google Sheets account. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says authorize with Google Sheets. We're then going to log into our Google account. We're then going to allow Thrivecard to integrate with our Google account. And what you can now do is store data about your orders and customers into Google Sheets. For example, when we are setting up a specific product, one of the things we can do is we can add a specific rule. And we can say that when the main product is purchased, what we want to do is we want to use Google Sheets and we then want to add them to a specific spreadsheet inside of our Google Sheets account. We can have Thrivecart create a specific spreadsheet. We can then click Save. We can then determine what kind of information we want to be stored in that Google Sheet. Perhaps we want personal information. 
pricing information, and shipping information. And so Google Sheets will integrate into the fulfillment process by storing information with us. Once we have everything in, we can then click Save. So each of the fulfillment services have different aspects of the process that will help you to serve your customer. Welcome back. Now one of the services that will allow you to connect with other third-party applications that you may use is Zapier. And we can connect to Zapier through the settings panel. And once we do that, we're going to then go to view integrations. Once we do that, you're going to click then on fulfillment services again. And what you're going to see is that there's a link here for Zapier. We're going to click that link. Now what you'll notice is that there is a Zapier developer link for Thrivecart. What you'll see here is that you have a Zapier developer link. And if you are logged into your account, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click accept invite and build a Zap. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the purchase is going to be the trigger for Zapier to set the action. So we're going to now click save and continue. Now if you've not connected your Thrivecart account, what you're going to need to do is to click this button that says connect an account. You should already be logged into your Thrivecart account, so if you click the button, the integration will begin. What you're going to do if you're logged in, you're going to get this dialog box from Thrivecart. You're going to click yes, allow access to my account. Once you've done that, what you'll do is click test. If you are successful, you'll then click save and continue. Now whatever action you set, can be for any of your Thrivecart products or you can create a specific zap for a specific product and what you're going to do you're going to trigger this zap for a specific product if you want to qualify your zap you can do that with these other optional areas what you're then going to do is click continue now if you already have a purchase inside of Thrivecart you can pull in that purchase as a sample but if you don't you can skip this step and use a default sample given to you by Thrivecart and Zapier. We're going to click continue with the default sample. What we're then going to need to do is add in our action step. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to add in a registrant to our GoToWebinar account. We're going to choose to create a registrant and click save and continue. We're going to test our GoToWebinar account. Once we verify it is successful, we can then go to the next step. If you don't have a webinar account, what you'd need to do is to connect an account. For example, what you need to do here to make the integration is to log into your GoToWebinar account so that it will then be connected to your Zapier account. Once you've done that, you'll click Save and Continue. You'll then go to this drop down menu to look for a webinar. You'll then select one of the webinars that you already have created inside of your account. And then you'll want to use the drop down menus for the rest of the required information. Now what you're basically doing is you're pulling in sample information so that Zapier will attend to the right field inside of your Thrivecart purchase. So in each case, we use the drop down menu, we find the appropriate information and then we click continue. We can then send a test registrant to go to webinar. Then our test will be verified. We can verify our registrant. And then Thrivecart will then be connected to our GoToWebinar account. We can then click Finish. Once we turn on our Zap, any purchase that is made from that specific product, that individual will then be placed on a webinar. Now what's important about this is that you will have a number of ways that you can connect with different cloud-based services through Zapier. However, you will not be able to find those Zapier connections in the web in search. You'll have to determine them by first accepting the beta program and then working through this Zapier search. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to start the process of creating a product inside of Thrivecart. And to do that, we're going to go to this area. And then we're going to click this button that says create new product. Now, typically, you'll already know whether you're creating a digital or physical product. For the sake of this video, we are going to start by creating a digital product. We're now going to give this product a name. 
And then we're going to give ourselves a descriptive internal label. Then within our product tab, we're then going to set our product status as live. We're then going to click our pricing button. And we're going to set our product price and our currency. Now we have several payment options for our product. We can do a subscription, a split pay, or even pay your own price. We're going to do a one-time fee. We're going to make it so that there is no trial period, but we could set a trial period if we were doing a subscription. We can determine that there's going to be a limit on the quantity. In this case, we're not going to set a limit, but we could set one here if we wanted to. We're then going to click Next. And then we're going to click Save. Now, if we want to calculate sales tax automatically, we can do that. If we want to customize the customer's invoice, we can do that also. And basically what we're doing is we're writing in information at the top of our invoice that we can use for any marketing purpose that we want. Once we've completed our pricing, we can then click Next. We're then going to come to a place where we can add in an order bump for our product. We can choose to add in what's called a one-click upsell, which basically allows our customer to add on something to their existing purchase for an additional price. We're going to untick this for now, and then we're going to click Next. We're now going to set up our payment processor. We click this button, and then we decide how we're going to take payment. In this case, we're going to take payment with Authorize.net, then we're going to click Save. Once we do that, we can then click Next. Now at this point, we can decide if we want to have affiliates to promote our product or whether we want it to be standalone with our own traffic. If we click this button, we're then going to need to go into setting this up for affiliates. But for now, we're going to assume that we're not going to have affiliates to promote this product. We're then going to click Next. That's going to bring us to the fulfillment area. And what we're going to do now is stop the video and we're going to complete fulfillment, checkout, and behavior in the next video. Welcome back. And we are now completing the process of setting up our product. In the fulfillment area after purchase, what you want to do is you want to display the place where your customer can get support. And you're also going to determine what happens after the product. You have a drop down menu. What you can do is send your customer immediately to a URL. You can add them to a membership site or you can display their total and their invoice. In this case, we are going to display their total and invoice. We're going to opt not to ship them a DVD from Kunaki and then we're going to click Next. What we now want to do is we want to select the kind of checkout page that our customer is going to see. If we're going to embed it into a page, we're going to use the embeddable checkout. If we're going to have it pop up from Thrivecart, we can have it pop up by using this one. Or if we're going to use a two-step checkout, we can use this page. We're going to choose to use the tall one-step checkout. What we're then going to do is click Next. We then have options to customize our checkout. And various aspects what we can do is we can have these things either change or have them reflect exactly what we want them to be. We can choose the specific layout and we can choose the colors. If it's relevant, you can change the card's language. Once you've made the decision, you can then click Next. You can also then customize the success page. If you're going to add in a video, you can embed the video here with a video code in this area. You can edit your headline text. Once you've done that, you can then click Next. If you're going to add in a tracking code of some kind from your autoresponder or some other area that you are tracking, you can add that code in by clicking this button and adding your code into this area. Once you've done that, you can then click Next. What you can then do is set up rules based on customer behavior. For example, you can set up rules if the product is purchased, 
if it's refunded, abandoned, or if a payment is declined. And basically what this does is it allows you to get more information and interact with your customer based on their behavior with your checkout page. Once you've completed this, you can then save and get your URL. You then have your live shopping cart URL. And basically, you can see your shopping cart checkout page by clicking this button. Now we chose not to add in any images, but we can but you can customize your page to look the way you want. Basically, when the individual will see this page, they will then be able to enter their email address and then write in their card number to complete their order. Welcome back. Now Thrivecart will give you the opportunity to map out the customer experience. And you can do that by going to your products and then you're going to go to edit the product. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure that your product is in test mode. Once you do that, you're going to click save and get the URL. Thrivecart is then going to give you the URL, but you are in test mode. So you're going to then copy that URL and then you're going to go to that URL in your web browser. Now, in order to test the customer experience, you're not going to want to change any of this information. You're just going to put in your email address so that you'll get the email as well as go through the checkout process. Once you do that, you'll then click complete order. And then you'll see your thank you page. You'll be able to scroll down and you'll be able to get your support link as well as to download the PDF with the invoice. Now we chose to send the individual to this invoice. We could have sent the individual straight to a URL where they can get their download. So it will be your choice as to how you want the customer to experience it, but you do want to go through the test so you'll be able to determine if that's the customer experience that your customer wants. You'll also notice that we have the cookie link here at the bottom, which the customer can then click accept. Welcome back. Now, when you get a support request and you need to do research on where a customer's purchase is, what you'll need to do here is you'll need to go to this tab that says transactions. Once you get to that tab, what you're going to do is put in the customer's name or typically you want to put in their email address. What you'll see is that you'll see the customer's purchase as well as their invoice and then any other information that you might need. Clicking the invoice will give you the actual invoice that the customer will see. What you can do then is then resend that invoice to the customer. You can also access what they're going to be accessing in terms of their purchase or the invoice. What you can also do is click the more button and you can see any other related activity for that customer. Welcome back. Now, one thing you can do to assist the research process is to give your customer the opportunity to do their own research. You can do that by going to this settings button. And what you're going to do then is go to your account wide settings. You're then going to click on your customer hub. And what you're going to do is make sure that this URL is prominent so that your customer can do their own research. They'll then be able to see this URL with your logo They'll be able to put in their email address so that they'll be able to do their own research. They will then get this email in their email box. They'll be able to click it. And it's there they'll be able to check their purchases, their payment plans, and their subscriptions. If they need to update their information, they can do that. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to go back and we want to take our product and make it available for our affiliates. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the product area. We're then going to edit our product. When we get to this point, we're going to go to this last panel for affiliates. And then what we're going to do is we're going to enable this area. And we do want affiliates to promote the product. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our commissions. So we're going to click this link. We're going to say that we are going to pay out 50% when our affiliates make a sale. We're going to state how we want our affiliates to be paid. Now, the only way to pay out affiliates instantly is to use PayPal. So you'll notice here that manually is grayed in. We're going to say that commissions are going to be due after 30 days. 
and then we're going to click Save. So now we have done our commission settings. What we're now going to do is we're going to click Setup Options. Now we may want to auto approve all signups or we may want to approve them ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to manually approve signups. What we can also do is we can disable signups, period. We're going to manually approve all signups. Now, by default, the last cookie is the one that makes the sale. So your affiliates need to know that they need to be the last person whose link the customer clicks on before they are going to be paid. So we're going to leave that at the default setting. The cookie expiration point we're going to leave at lifetime. That's the default. However, we can set it at a specific number of days. Once we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put the URL in here where we're going to have our sales button and where we want the individual to be sent once the customer clicks the affiliate link. So we're going to put that URL in here. Once we have everything in, we're then going to click Save. Once we have all our information in, we can then click Save and Get URL. You're then going to see two URLs. The first is the URL that you're going to give your affiliates in order to sign up to promote the product. The second is an example affiliate URL. So what you're going to do is you're going to copy the URL that you're going to give your partners and then you're going to place it on your page or send it out to them. The individual will then see this URL in order to sign up to promote our product. They'll either need to sign in and register or they'll need to log in if they already have a Thrivecards account. You're also going to see another tab and this is going to be code for an embeddable sign up button. So what you can do is you can take this code, place it on your website, and then an individual can click that link in order to sign up for your affiliate program. It's another way of accessing the affiliate program without having to click on a link. They'll click on a button instead. In conclusion, We've now seen everything that you need in order to get your Thrivecart account up and running. We've looked at the necessary settings, including legal and compliance, the customer text and translation, as well as the account-wide settings. We looked at ways that you can customize your invoices, as well as setting up your customer hub to do customer research. We looked at setting up your customer blacklist, in case there's someone that you do not want to purchase your products or services. We also looked at the integrations. In particular, we set up our payment gateways. We also set up our autoresponders. We integrated with our membership platforms. We also looked at how you can set up Zapier to connect with third-party applications. We also took a look at the setup process for our products and walked through each aspect of the setup process including product, fulfillment, checkout, and behavior. And finally, we also looked at how you'd set up your product to be promoted by affiliates. Welcome back. If you now know how to set up your Thrivecard system as well as how to set up your product, You'll note that there are more advanced options for you to be able to pursue. You can pursue an order bump. You can also create an entire sales funnel. You can create both coupons and subscriptions. And there are aspects of the affiliate management process that you'll want to be aware of. Thrivecart will allow you to have JV partners. And it's a good idea to look more carefully at some of the integrations that are available to you. So in this course, We'll go through some of the more advanced options that you have available to you in order to use Thrivecart. And in particular, we'll look at the creation of upsells, downsells, split tests, and coupons. Welcome back. Now in this case, we're going to come back to our products. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go to the upsell section. And then we're going to click create first upsell. Now in this case, our upsell is going to be one that's going to be digital and not require shipping. We're going to create first upsell. So we want to write the upsell 
in a name that we do want to appear on the invoice. Once we do that, we're then going to click the pricing. We're then going to decide what we want our upsell to be. In this case, we're going to have it to be a one-time fee. We're going to limit the quantity. And once we've set the quantity at 10, what we're going to do is we're going to state that when the copies are all sold, we're going to have the funnel skip this upsell and save the settings. We're going to only allow one purchase at a time, but we do have other options. You can have multiple purchases at one time, but we're going to only allow one purchase at a time. And now we're going to write in our price. Once we do that, we'll then click next. We are then going to allow our affiliates to be credited and we're going to save this at 50%. Once we do that, we'll then click next. Now the way that Thrivecart works, is once you set up this upsell, you'll be able to use it across multiple products. So this product will not necessarily have a URL that'll be visible. So you'll need to make sure that you have this set up inside of a funnel and that it can be accessed through another front end product. We're now going to click next. And basically what we can do is we can then customize the upsell page. And to customize the upsell page, we can edit the headline. We can add in an upsell video with the embed code. We can then add in a text ribbon, as well as to add in more content as well as an image. And finally, what we can do is we can then add in our upsell button. And this is what our upsell button will read unless we make changes to it, which we can do here and edit in the content we want. Now, when we do it this way, we are using Thrivecart's upsell page in order to promote the product. We do have a drop down menu, and we can create our own web page. And what you'll notice then is that we can embed this button onto that page. What we can also do on our own page is to create a custom image. And you'll notice here that all we'll need to do here is we'll need to place our button image in this area. We can select that image here and upload it to this section so that it will appear as our own button. So basically all the copy will be on our page. We'll be using the Thrivecart button though in order to create the upsell effect. Once we've completed this, we can then click Next. Now there's default language for the link text for the customer to access their purchase. You can then write in that same language and place your product name in there. What we can do then is then click Next. If we want to add in tracking, we can do that by adding it in here. Otherwise, we can then click Next. If we have specific rules to perform, perhaps when the upsell is purchased, what we want to do is we want to use our AWeber account and add them to a specific list. We can do that here in this behavior rule area. In this case, when the upsell is purchased, we're going to have this individual added to our get response list. And then we're going to click save. What we're then going to do is save our upsell. Now the upsell that we just created can be used in any of our product sales funnels. Now what we're going to do is to go to our product list and we're going to see our upsell here. In the next video we will move on to create the sales funnel. Welcome back. Now we already have a product and what we're going to do for this product is first we're going to go in and edit this product and we're going to change the fulfillment. And after purchase, we're going to send these individuals to a specific URL. And we're going to allow the URL to never to expire. Now, one thing that we can do is we can make this URL expire after a certain period of time. We're now going to save that URL. What we're now going to do is we're going to create a funnel. So we're going to click this button that says Create Funnel. And we're going to tick the box that says enable the sales funnel. Now you're going to choose how you want the experience to happen. You can have all of the purchases lead to display the invoice. 
You can have all the purchases lead to the URL. In most cases, that's what you're going to do. Or you can add the individuals to a membership site. Or if you have custom scripting, you can add that here. Now you can choose to use a two-step or one-step confirmation. The most conservative way is to use a confirmation step, which as Thrivecard states, minimizes chargebacks and refunds because the person has to confirm that they want to go forward. What you'll do next is you'll add in what your upsell one is going to be. Now there are a couple of things that you want to note. You're going to have to place in here a success URL for this upsell because we basically stated we're going to send our customer to a URL to get their product. So we're going to write that URL in here. Now you're going to notice here that there is a way to deliver the upsell so that your Meyer is only going to be sent to one URL. So in effect, when they get this product, they're going to be sent to their front end and upsell product if you're going to use this as a replacement. If they're going to be sent to two separate URLs, you will not use the replacement option. But there's one more thing about the replacement option. If we choose to make this product one where they're going to receive the front end and upsell on their download page, another option that you have here is you can actually cancel the payment for the product that replaces. In most cases, this is something that you won't do, but it is an option to you. What you're now going to do is click Save and Publish. Now, if you remember, we stated that we were going to use our own web page in order to place the Thrivecart button for the upsell. So we'll need to enter a page here for our upsell. And what we're going to do on that page is we're going to copy this button code and we're going to place that button code on the page that we place here in this dialog box. And once we've placed our embed code on the page, we can then click verify and continue. What you now have inside of your product is you have your, what you now have is your cart URL. You also have your sales funnel. So that when the person makes their purchase, they will then be sent to your upsell URL, which you specified. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to create a downsell for our funnel. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our products area. And then we're going to go to the downsell tab. I'm going to click this button that says create a downsell. Our downsell is going to be a digital product, but we could make it a physical product. We're going to give our downsell a name. Once we do that, we're then going to click next. We're then going to determine how we want this to be paid. We can make it into a subscription. We can make it into split pay. Or in this case, we're going to just make it a one-time fee. We're going to make this unlimited quantities. We could limit it to a certain number. We can allow one purchase at a time, or we can allow multiple purchases at a time. However, we're going to leave the default at only allow one purchase at a time and we're now going to set our price. What we're going to do now is we're now going to click next. In this case, we are not going to have affiliates promote the downsell. If we did want to, all we'd certainly need to do is to click this button. But for the sake of example, we're going to leave this unticked. We're now going to go on to our fulfillment area. And then this is going to be a downsell that we can attach to multiple offers just as we did our upsell. We're now going to click next. Now for the upsell, we used our own page. We're going to do that again. And so we're going to use our custom image. That means then we're going to select our own buy button. We're going to upload it here. Once we've done that, we're then going to click next. We're now going to put in our custom success page text, and we're then going to click Next. We are not going to track our page, but if we wanted to add tracking, we can add the code in this area. 
What we're now going to do is we're then going to click Next. We're now going to add in our rule. And when this down sell is purchased, we are going to add these individuals to our get response list. And we're going to add them to a specific campaign. Once we do that, we're then going to click Save. And what we're now going to do is we're going to save our down sell. Our down sell can now be added to any of our sales funnels. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to work through creating a coupon for our product. And to do that, we're going to go into our product. We're then going to go to this coupon area. We're then going to click create our coupon. And then we're going to give that coupon a name and then a code. Once we do that, we can determine what kind of coupon we're going to have. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to make this a percentage and we're going to make this 25% off. What we're also going to do is we're going to decide where it's going to be applied. So in this case, we're going to apply it only to the main product. Once we do that, we can then click Next. We can determine when it's going to be redeemable. We can have it to be redeemable immediately, or we can start this at a specific date. We can set the end date as to when it's going to be redeemable. We can say it's only going to be valid until a specific date. We can decide whether or not it will apply an affiliate. We can say yes, and then we can enter the affiliate ID for this specific affiliate. Or we can just have this to apply to everyone. We can also disable this coupon once it's been used a certain number of times. And we can write that number in here. Once we've completed the usage options, we can then click Next. We can then apply this to a specific product. We'll then click this box. We can add rules to the usage of this coupon. For example, when someone purchases with this coupon, we can set them up on a specific list. And once we do that, we can then click Save. And basically now we have activated our 25% coupon for a specific product. We'll need to copy the code and then we'll need to make sure that code goes to the individuals that we want to have the discount. Now when the individual comes to our checkout page, what they'll do is they'll put in the coupon code, they'll click apply, and then you'll notice then that they'll get a discount which they can complete in the purchase process. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to work through the process of creating a split tested version of our product. And we're going to come to the product panel. And then you're going to notice A B test here in this area. We're going to click that panel. And then we're going to click on create A B test. And basically, what the A B test does is it compares two products to see which one is going to be the most effective in helping us to reach a specific monetary goal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click Get Started. We first pick one of our products and then click Next. And then we're going to pick the second product that we're going to test. And then we're going to click Next. And we're going to give this test a name. And we're going to determine how we're going to test these two offers. We can do the highest income, highest conversion, or lowest cart abandonment. For the sake of this video, we're going to consider highest income our test. We're then going to determine when the test is going to end. And then we're going to give a specific checkout URL for our test. Once we do that, we can then click Create A-B Test. And basically now the URL that we're going to be using is going to be this URL for our cart. And then what will happen is Thrivecart will then begin to calculate which one does better on the basis of the test that we set up. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in this video, we are going to create a subscription product. And to do that, we're going to go inside of our products area, and we're going to create a new product. We're going to have this to be a digital product. 
we're going to give our product a name. Once we do that, we're then going to go to the pricing area. And then we're going to click set the product price. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have this to be a subscription. Then we're going to determine the billing frequency. We can do monthly, annually, quarterly, every six months, every two weeks, weekly or daily. We're going to do monthly and we're going to set a monthly price. We can choose to do a trial period. We can do a seven day trial period. What we're going to do then is we're going to set the price at $7. And what's going to happen is the customer is going to be charged $7 today. And then after the trial, they're going to be charged $24.95 every month. We can then choose to make sure that the quantity is unlimited. And then we can click next. What we're then going to do is click save. And then we'll walk through the rest of the process as we normally would. Now we have created this product in test mode. So what we can do now is we can copy the URL and we can then go to our browser so that we can see what the checkout page will look like. And you'll see then that our checkout indicates that today's payment will be $7 and that monthly payments will start in seven days at $24.95 when they sign up. Welcome back. Now to manage the subscription, all you'll need to do is go back to your products You'll then need to edit your subscription product. And then if you want to make changes to the subscription itself, you'll need to go to the pricing area. And then what you can do is you can either edit the subscription. We're also going to make the renewal period every two weeks. We're also then going to limit the number of rebills to a custom. And we're going to set this at 24 periods, which is 12 months. What you'll notice then is that Thrivecart will then do all of the calculation in order to be added to your checkout page. What we then do is we're going to click next and then we'll click save. Now we can add in another pricing option. In this case, what we can do is we can say that along with the subscription, we're also going to offer a one-time fee and we're going to make the one-time fee at a certain level. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to limit the number of these to 10. And we're then going to click next. We're only going to allow one purchase at a time and then we're going to click save. And what you're going to notice this time is that the individual then has a pricing option. They can either take the subscription for $24.95 a month or they can choose to take the one-time payment for $249. Thrivecart will also let the individual know that there are only 10 of these spots available. To track these subscriptions, all you'll need to do is to go to this area. You'll be able to click this button and you'll be able to use this panel to do research on all of your available statistics. You'll be able to look at them according to whether they're active or new trial, pause, cancel, or completed. And you'll be able to look at them over time. Welcome back. Now Thrivecart gives you an area where you can manage your affiliates and you're going to go to this top bar and you're going to see the tab here. You're going to click that tab and first you're going to see all of your affiliate statistics at a glance. You'll be able to sort by the level of the product. You'll be able to sort by the kind of product. You'll also be able to look at different levels of goal and success that you want to track, whether it's sales, revenue, net revenue, or refunds, or average lifetime value. And then you can look at this information for the affiliates that have been earning for you over time. We we'll then go over to the payments tab. And if you have any affiliates that you're paying manually, this is where you'll see that information. If you see an affiliate and they have payments that have not been able to be processed, you'll see that in this failed area. If you see any payments that are upcoming, you'll see them here. If you have payments to make for some reason, if you did not have them on automatic commissions, you can see those payments here at a glance. All this can be sorted by individual affiliate according to their products and then over time. 
One tab over, you'll be able to look at all of your affiliates. So for example, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to look at those affiliates that have signed up for your products and you can filter them by their status. So if you've had affiliates that you denied, if you have affiliates that are pending, you'll be able to sort for them here. You may look at them by their activity or how much that they are generating for you in terms of sales and leads. You can look at them by affiliate type as well as VIP status. Now if you have affiliates from another system that you're using, you can import that affiliate list into your Thrivecard system by clicking this link. And then you'll choose the products that they'll have access to when you import them. What you'll then need is you'll then need your CSV file. What you can also do is you can add contacts from your autoresponder and you can choose them from an individual list that you have. And to get the signed up URL, you're just going to go to the product options and any one of the products that you have available, you'll be able to get the sign up link URL and then give it to your affiliates. And what we're going to do is stop the video right here and we're going to pick it up from this point and then finish on the rules. Welcome back and we're going to pick it up from this sign up link and basically what you're going to do is click this link and then what you can do is you can copy your affiliate sign up URL. You want to place that link someplace where your affiliates are going to see it. Your affiliate will then need to log in and register and then once they sign in they'll then agree and then they'll click confirm my registration. You'll then see that affiliate in your approved affiliates area. Now one tab over you can add rules for your affiliates. We can click this button that says add rule. We can say that when an affiliate signs up for any of our products we want to have that individual added to an email marketing list. In this particular we're going to use our integration with GetResponse to add them to a specific campaign. Once we do that, then we'll save our affiliate rules. And then what we have then is we have an affiliate management system in place that will help us to keep in touch with our affiliates as well as give them links for them to promote. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to set up for a partner. And a partner differs from an affiliate in that this is an individual that you are going to share revenue with apart from your affiliates. And so in order to set up a partnership, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this section and this panel. And the process is going to start by creating a contract. Now the first thing you're going to write in is the partner name and the partner email and then you're going to write in some descriptive information. Once you have the identifying information in, you're then going to click Next. Now you're typically going to do this on a product by product basis, but you can add more than one product to an individual that is working with you on the project. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add this individual as a partner on one of the products and then we're going to click Next. We're then going to give the contract an identifying name. Now we can determine when the contract is going to begin. So for example, we can say that it's going to begin on a specific date or we can say it's going to begin as soon as the partner accepts the invitation. We're then going to specify how long the contract is going to be available. Or again, we can state a specific date. We can decide how we want to pay the partner. We can either decide to have the partner paid automatically through Thrivecart and have Thrivecart administer the payment or we can say that we're going to pay that individual outside of Thrivecart. Once we do that we're then going to click Next. We're then going to determine what percentage this individual is going to be paid for their work. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to say that we're going to give them 50% of all of the products that they are considered to be a partner on. And we can do this on a product by product basis by setting specific percentages on specific products. In this case, we only have one product, but again, we're going to be specific about the products and the percentage that the partner gets. We're going to click Save, and then we're going to click Save. And what we've now done is we've now created our partner. 
so that after the affiliates are paid, then the partner and the creator, which in most cases is going to be you, will be splitting that revenue once it comes. Welcome back. When the individual is invited to become a partner, they'll need to accept your invitation. And so what they'll need to do is to click here so that they can set up a partner account. And they'll need that partner account so that they can track their statistics of the product that is being sold. They will then get a new password delivered to them by email. Once they have that password, they'll be able to go back and log in. They will then have a partner area. They'll be able to look to their contracts and they'll be able to view the contract. They'll then click this button that says view contract and they'll then decide to accept the contract. Now this contract will be active and they'll be earning for every sale that comes in on that individual product. If you F5 or refresh your page, you'll then see now that you have an active partner on a particular product. If we go to the payouts area, we'll then see a similar screen as we did with the affiliates. There won't be any automatic payouts because we did not set it up that way, but we will have manual payouts as sales are generated on that product. We can also set up rules for our partner. We can click add the rule. And we're going to apply this rule to our contract. And we're going to say that when this partner has a contract that reaches its expiration, we're then going to send an email and they're going to write in their email address. We're then going to click save. And then our rule will be added. We'll then click save contract rules. And our rules will then be saved. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to integrate with the print on demand company Kunaki. So, to do that, we're going to go to our settings. We're then going to go to view integrations. We're then going to go to view fulfillment services. And we're going to click our Kunaki settings. And to do that, what we're going to do is to put in our Kunaki user ID. And then we're going to put in our Kunaki password. You should already have your Kunaki account set up before you start this process. If you haven't done that, you'll want to go to kunaki.com to set up your Kunaki account. Now, if you put in the correct email and password, you will be connected to your Kunaki account. That means that in some places where you have a, when you are in the fulfillment area, you're going to see this link. It's going to say, do you want to ship a CD or DVD to your customers via Kunaki? going to say yes and then when someone purchases your product you're going to select a Kunaki product that you already have available inside of your Kunaki account. What you're going to place in this dialog box is you're going to place a Kunaki product ID and you can get that product ID from inside of your account. You'll be able to grab the ID here and then you'll be able to copy it and paste it into your Thrivecart account. Now Printful is a site where you can sell on-demand custom-made products through an account on demand. And you'll need to have an account with them in order to connect it to your Thrivecart account. If you don't have an account, you'll need to fill in your information. You'll need to then sign up. You'll want to make sure that your email is confirmed. You'll then confirm your email address. Now the information you need is going to be your Printful API key. And when you're in your settings area, you're going to go to stores. And then you're going to click on this button that says manual order platform API. We're going to create a custom store. We're then going to edit our settings. We're then going to click API. We're then going to click enable API access. We'll then accept the terms. We'll then copy the key. And we'll then place that key inside of our Thrivecart account. Our Printful option will then be saved. When we are setting up the shipping options for our product, what we're going to do is select a provider, and that's going to be Printful. And then we're going to save our shipping options. And we'll then set up our product in all of the other ways that we have reviewed 
and your Printful account will then be connected to your Thrivecart account. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to connect our Thrivecart account to our book self-publishing account in lulu.com. And to do that, we're going to go to the settings area. We're then going to click view integrations. We're then going to go inside of our fulfillment services. And then we're going to click on view settings. You're then going to need some details from your Lulu account. Now, just so you'll note, the client key and secret key will not be inside of your main Lulu account. It's going to be inside of your Lulu API account. Now, in order to get your client key and client secret, you're going to need to go to the Lulu API. When you first log in to the API, you're going to need to verify your email. Inside of your profile, you're going to need to click on API keys. What you're going to need to do is to click this blue button that says Generate Client. You'll then have the information that you need for Thrivecart. You'll need to get the client key and the client secret. Once you have your information in, you're going to click Save this Lulu account. You'll then be authorized to use your Lulu account with your Thrivecart system. To use it when you're creating a product, you're going to make sure to create a physical product. And when you get to the fulfillment area, you're going to add in a shipping option. And when you're going to choose this time, you're going to choose Lulu. And then you'll need to choose the kind of shipping that you want the book to have. And then you'll need book specific information from Lulu. You'll need your Lulu package ID your URL for your source files, as well as your URL for your source files. Once you have all this, you'll then click Save, and then you'll proceed through the product setup as you normally would. Now we are going to walk through a live example from scratch, and we're going to start by creating a new product here inside of our product area. And we're going to click Create New Product, and we're going to start by creating a digital product. We're going to give our product a name. And for now, we're going to keep this purchase in test mode. We're now going to set our pricing. And we're going to set our product price according to what we want it to be. We're going to make this price a one-time fee. And then we're only going to make 50 of these downloads available. We're then going to click Next. We're then going to click Save. We're not going to calculate sales tax and we're not going to customize our customer's invoice. We're then going to click Next. We're then going to set up a bump offer on this product and we're going to make that bump offer a digital product. We're going to confirm that fact here. We're going to call this bump product something else. And we're going to add in the additional price. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to click Next. We're now going to set up our payment processor. And our payment processor is going to be authorized.net. We're then going to click Save. We are going to make this product available for affiliates. And so we're going to set up the commission at 50%. And we're going to do the same for the bump offer. And we're going to say the commissions are going to be due after 30 days. We're then going to click Save. We're then going to set up our options. Now we are going to manually approve our affiliates we're going to leave the default as the last cookie. We're also going to make the cookie expiry lifetime. And we're going to make our affiliate link target a specific URL. What we're now going to do is click Save. Welcome back. We're going to now pick it up from the Affiliates tab and we're going to go on to the Fulfillment area. And what we're now going to do is we're going to put in our support URL. And what we're going to do once the customer pays is we're going to send them to our URL. 
So we're going to write in that success URL here. And we're also going to place our success URL for our bump offer. Now we're going to forego shipping a CD to our customers via Kanaki. We're now going to click Next. We're going to use our one-step checkout. And then we're going to click Next. And so what we're going to do is we're going to edit our countdown timer. And we're going to add a countdown timer to the page. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it end on a specific date and time and then we're going to change the background color and then we're going to click save once we have edited all of our information in we're then going to click next we are going to use the default success page and so we're going to leave the default text here and then click next we're not going to add in tracking if we did we would put in our codes here we're then going to click Next. What we're now going to do is we're going to add a rule so that the individuals will be added to our autoresponder when they make their purchase. So to do that, we're going to click Add Rule. And we're going to say that when the main product is purchased, we want these individuals to be added to our Get Response list. And we're going to add them to a specific list. Once we do that, we will then click Save. And our rule is now ready to be run. We can now save and get our URL. What we're now going to do is view our checkout page. And we can see our information here as we want it. And so if the individual then writes in and checks off this box, then you'll notice here then they'll have this price added. Now one thing that we did not do here is we did not edit this text to say $75. So what we really need to do is to go back to our order bump page and change this to $75. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit our product settings. We're going to go to the bump and we're going to place our cursor in here. And Basically what we're going to do is we're going to then edit in our text. We're then going to click save. Our checkout now has the $75. Now for this product, we're going to assume that we're going to add in a funnel. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Create Funnel. And then we're going to click Enable the Sales Funnel. When the customers purchase, we're going to provide URLs to the purchases. And we're going to leave it as one click in terms of their confirmation step. We're then going to do is to configure our upsell and we're going to add in our upsell and then we're going to add in a success URL. Now we're not going to have this to be a replacement for any of the purchases so we're going to leave it as is. Once we do that we're then going to click save and publish. We're now going to have to specify our page for the upsell and so what we're going to do is write in the URL here. Once we do that, what we're going to do is copy this code and we're going to head to our website and we're going to place the code on this page. So we're going to place our code and we're going to click update. And then we're going to preview the HTML. And so this is an indication that our code is working correctly. And we can then verify and continue. And our sales funnel is now ready to receive customers. Welcome back. What we're going to do now is we're going to split the profits of the product that we just created with a partner. And this is going to be apart from. So what you do is you'd go into the JV Partners area. And then what we're going to do is click Create a Contract. We're then going to choose an existing partner or we're going to create a new partner. Once we have our partner in, we're then going to click Next. We're then going to choose the products where we're going to be splitting the profit. And we're going to choose the product that we just created. We're then going to click Next. We're then going to give this contract a name. Now we're going to say that this partnership is going to begin as soon as the partner accepts. Now this would assume though that you have not begun generating profits or that you have the arrangement with the individual. 
We're then going to assume then that the contract will last until we go in to cancel the contract. We're then going to choose to pay our JV partner manually outside of Thrivecart. Now you could, if you wanted to pay through PayPal and you were receiving funds through PayPal, you could choose to pay that individual automatically. However, we set up the product with Authorize.net, so we will pay these individuals outside of Thrivecart. We're then going to click Next. Now, What we need to do is we need to determine how the partner is going to be paid and on what levels they're going to be paid. And we're going to assume that everything that we have in this product, that partner is going to receive 50% of the profit. Now we're going to choose to apply all of the default percentages above. We're then going to click Save. You're going to notice then that we have one pending partnership. Now what you need to do is you need to inform the individual that they have a contract that they need to look at inside of their account. And so that invitation will be in their email. They'll need to check it. That individual will have an email in their inbox that says they need to accept the contract from you. They'll need to click here to sign in and accept the contract. Now if they don't have an account, they'll need to create one from this link. Otherwise, they can sign in to their Thrivecart account. Now once they're inside of their Thrivecart account, what they'll need to do is to go to the contracts area. And what they'll then need to do is to choose the pending contract. They'll click view contract. They'll say that this contract needs activation. They'll need to view this contract. They'll need to look at the percentages and then accept the contract. That contract will then be active inside of their account. Now back inside of your account, what you'll then need to do is to refresh by clicking F5. You'll then have two active contracts. Now assuming then that the partnership ends or that the product has been launched and the partner has been paid. And now what you want to do is you want to end the contract so there won't be any more payments made to a partner. What you do then is you'd go inside of the contract. You then cancel the contract. Then you click cancel the contract. You'll then see that there are inactive contracts. You can then cancel any other contract that you want to cancel. And then if you go back inside of your JV area, you'll see that those contracts are now inactive. That means then that all of the profit that comes into your account will then flow directly to your processing account. In conclusion, in addition to doing a live example, we've walked through the process of creating upsells and downsells inside of the product area, in addition to A-B tests as well as coupons. We've also looked at subscription, creation, and management, as well as the creation of JV partners and management also. We've looked at some specific integrations of fulfillment choices. We've looked at Kunaki, Printful, and self-publisher Lulu. And finally, we walked through the process of affiliate creation and management inside of our panel. You should now be ready to set up your product, whether it is digital online or physical offline, and use it in a way to build your income. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.